for the 2 o'clock job meeting. Uh, in general, there's been not a lot of progress in the last month. And you can say some of it is weather related, some of it's holiday related. Um, but I'm kind of disappointed at the overall progress of the job, to be honest with you. The, the town has little recourse other than to make sure that we've given the contractor's answers that he needs. Uh, but he has a contract to perform. But the fact that we're still at, we're January and we still don't have walls on it, and that's uh, that's a little concerning. Uh, I know BC is going to have a whole bunch of excuses why. I mean, he had to do a lot of site work, but it seems like while he was doing site work, he was kind of ignoring the building a little bit and just doing site work. And the building, the building is is lagging in in production. I think the next two months, if the weather was what it's been for the last two weeks, um, there might be more excuses as to why he can't continue. Uh, so I'm concerned about that. Uh, I'm concerned because he's already positioned himself in a way that he feels that winter conditions are not his responsibility. Uh, pushing, pushing the schedule because the additional site work is going to be his excuse for uh, temporary heat and temporary conditions and you know, I'm a little fearful as to how this is all going to play out. I think the best thing to hope for is good weather and then it'll eliminate at least one excuse. But we'll have to see how that actually plays out. Uh, I'm cautiously optimistic but he was, he was wanting wall panels delivered in October so we could start installing them in November. Uh, nothing that we've done, the owner or, or the OPM or the architect, has prevented him from going ahead and putting wall panels up. But they're still not. They're on site, but mm -hmm. they're they're not at a point where he's comfortable uh, putting them on yet. Yes, there are going to be additional questions that he's going to have going forward, and yes, we're going to be there to provide some answers. But uh, we're still getting submittals on on items that we're well into this project and we should not be receiving submittals even at this point. They should have all been done and, and approved a long time ago. A long time ago. So that it, I just bring it up just to notify you as a committee that you, you probably notice the same thing I notice. Um, the handouts that I gave uh, out to you tonight, I, I gave you three handouts. I'll start with the first one, which is the contract summary sheet. It's the monthly sheet that I give to give you an update on contract status as far as dollars are concerned. The contract summary for the police to headquarters has five change orders to date, and the MEC has three change orders to date, and the total contract sum is indicated at now $7,729,894.56. And the change order summary for Norfolk Police includes a lot of items that you've been aware of. I don't think there's anything new on this list. I can run down uh, quickly what some of them are. 22R, if it's R, it means it's been revised. And it's typically been revised to a lower number. So the 22R is uh, prepping the concrete and the plumbing trench. It's still getting back to the trench drains at the Sally Port. That's the, I believe, the final dollar amount because now it's the, the concrete slab has been poured and we're back to a slab condition. <coughs> the 23, the 33,253.66, this was actually brought up at your last committee meeting. Uh, you had made a motion and you approved this amount, but we have never put it into a change order. So this is how they're actually going to get paid for that work. But, but you uh, have in your meeting minutes from the last meeting that 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 amount was was brought up by Matt uh, and voted on. 24 uh, has to do with more site work re regarding the water line and 25R is bringing in gas line and, and water meter or gas line and gas meter. 26 uh, cut and set plywood forms for generator trench. This was not just plywood but this was also the concrete, uh, has to do with the concrete. The plywood forms for the generator trench was 
they put plywood forms up so they could limit the amount of concrete they needed to pour. The, the trench was wide. They put the plywood forms up so they could limit the amount of concrete they had to pour into the trench. But that's for also, not for the concrete, it's for the trenching. It, it's for the trenching and the backfilling and the forms uh, to prepare for the, for the concrete. So there's additional scope. Uh, so, can I ask? Sure. The, um, in the concrete in the, um, in the trench, wasn't that part of the job? The concrete was. That's why I said this is only <coughs> for the forms and the backfill. Backfill was not part of the scope. The form yeah. should have been part the of the form, scope. The forms. I don't care if you put forms in it or not. Fill it up with concrete. Or don't no. take the hole so big that you'd need forms to limit the concrete. <clears throat> there were some limiting factors they had on that. I think if you look at the breakdown, this, this does represent additional scope. Uh, I can give you the backup. The 27 dimensional revisions for the elevator, this goes back. It's, this really doesn't have anything to do with the revised elevator when we revised it back to, to ThyssenKrupp. <coughs> what this has to do was it was a decision of the owner to increase the dimension of the elevator. And you had made that decision on the original elevator that was submitted. And the shaft got bigger, the pit got bigger, and we accommodated the bigger dimension in the plan. So now this has to do with the mason contractor having to build a bigger shaft. And this was anticipated when the decision was made to go to the bigger size elevator. At the last meeting, you had a change order that revised the manufacturer. It really has nothing to do with that because the alternate manufacturer is matching that bigger <laughs> elevator dimension. So it's, it's having to do with accommodating the shaft size increase. And then 28 precast sills for the mason contractor. This was a dispute for the mason contractor. We have on our drawings at window sills along the base of the building, we have precast concrete window sills. We have them on our drawings, but we did not call them out in the spec for the mason to carry the precast sills. So he was disputing the fact that he owned them. So the cost here is to provide them. It's not to install them. We've got him to own the installation of them. He just needs to go out and buy them. And it wasn't in BC scope. It's one of those, it, I love filed subbidding, but if you don't tell the contractor what he has to go out and buy specifically, he's not gonna go out and buy it. And they're not gonna assume they're gonna own it. So we've agreed that that's the purchase price of the, the precast sills. And then the installation is, is by the mason contractor. So that's 28. The application for payment that's in for this month for uh, BC construction does include payment on some of these items. It includes payment on 22R, 24, 25R, and 26. And 23. 23 and 23 so those are the ones yeah. that to approve a requisition for payment yeah. you should be approving 22 r 23 yeah. 24 25 r and 26 if you want to wait on 27 and 28 you can or you can improve you can uh, approve all of them I take it back 23 was already it was already paid. Yeah, already paid. Yeah. 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 Why are you saying that? Just because the precast uh, sills aren't there yet, and but the the elevator has been done. So I I would recommend that the change order be in the amount of seventy six oh forty four twelve, which is on that right right hand side. But isn't that adding up all of them? <coughs> That's adding up. That's all adding all. Of them. Yeah. Yeah. Did they finish? The elevator shaft above the roof line. I thought they hadn't completed that. 
that could be. It's, it's not all complete. No. Not all complete. So that's why it's not in the. Yeah. That's why it's not in the. Uh, yeah. We're not requisitioning for it either. Right. right. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? No. no. Want to make a motion, Jack? I will happily make a motion to approve the change orders 22R, 23, 24, 25R, 26, 27, and 28 in the amount of $76,044.12. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 I give you a summary on the Aye. back on the mech. There's really little to talk about on the mech because there's no change order proposal. <coughs> it, I do want to note for you as a committee, the, the, the PCOs that were being presented to the mech that were shared costs for site work, those were approved through the mech. Or just a report that those have been processed through the MEC. Next handout that I gave you was a letter that I had sent out recommending <coughs> the apparent low bidder for the integrated technology scope that was bid, and bids were received on <coughs> December 19th. <coughs> we received two bids. One was from Signet Electronic Systems and the second bid from Lantel Communications. We had broken the bid into a base bid and an alternate, and the alternate was for work associated with the MEC. The bid from Signet Electronic Systems was a base bid of $343,750 with an alternate of $236,020. Lantel Communications out of Norwood, Mass. Base bid of 462,773 with a MEC alternate of 269,789. <coughs> In this letter, I do state that on the second page, second paragraph, that Gary Primo was looking to approve this scope if the town of Norfolk was to approve this scope. <coughs> He's since contacted me and would like to review this further with Signet. So I just want to bring that up, that uh, the MEC has not determined yet how they want to take action on this with the alternate. But I suggested that Gary and Signet and ourselves sit down, review the spec. Mm -hmm. He was unsure what might have been included and what some of the terminology was. So we're going to sit down, make a date, sit down, and go over the MEC components. As far as the components on the town side, I know that it was reviewed a, a number of times. This is when Michael Yang was, was here. I know Matt was involved uh, in going over the details of the Norfolk Police side spec. It was based off drawings that we had, we had uh, <coughs> put out along with the specification. My history with Signet Electronic Systems is, is excellent. They have one police department that they are doing installations in <laughs> right now in Connecticut. They, that's Bethel Police in Bethel, Connecticut. They have recently completed the Ledger Police Department in Ledger, Connecticut. They did the Gardner Police Department in Gardner, Mass. Um, uh, I probably have six projects where, where Signet has done installations. They're familiar with our drawings, they're familiar with the spec, and I have no doubt that they're going to deliver on the, uh, the project per plans and specifications. They're not looking to substitute any manufacturers, but with the way the bid was put together, they have a choice of three manufacturers. So they're going to stay within the listed manufacturers for equipment we would we will not know the specific make and model of parts and piece numbers until they give us a submission and we'd have to review that against the specification but they're not going to deviate from any of the manufacturers that are that are listed in the specification uh, 
this, this is a significant difference. This is like 35% difference in prices. Yeah, so it's... <laughs> yeah, how, how is it that they... Um, same drawing, same <coughs> spec. They didn't miss anything? Well, I did get a phone call from Lantel Communications after the, the bid was open, and Lantel wanted to make sure if they had a complete bid. I said the paperwork was in order, all the bid bonds was there, DCAM certification update statement was all submitted. And then Lantel was the one that said, I don't know how they can do it for this. Uh, but I, I do know that they will perform for this. And, and you had $200,000 as an estimate for this equipment? When we put it out to bid, our estimate was 360000 It was $200,000 was the number that we had anticipated for integrated technology. The additional... <coughs> 160,000 was for the telephone data wiring and all the face plates, terminations. We have racks, we have patch panels, and all of the installation of the telephone data wiring. So that brought us to our $360,000 anticipated bid amount. So, did you have that cabling and all that in the original bid? or yeah. We had the cabling in our original cost estimate for the project. It was our intent to have the cabling as part of Griffin Electric's scope. Griffin has come out and protested b due to a response that we gave in an addendum. And that's how they've stated that it's not within their scope. So given that protest from Griffin, instead of going to Griffin and getting a price to install it, we're not going to Griffin to get the, the price. We included it in the competitive bid of the Signet bid. So that's going to be. I'm just looking at the overages of what where we where we started and where we're going. <coughs> so we're 165 thousand dollars over based on what we originally were thinking. <coughs> yes. Just on just on this portion of it. Yes. If you were anticipating that to be within. BC Construction's <coughs> number, we, we find out that it's not, so there's a $160,000 delta there that was unanticipated. Now when BC's construction bid came in, it came in under our anticipated budget too though. It came in under the cost estimate. Do you know what the breakdown is between the additional we added scope of work, but also what is it, the value of the wiring? We didn't, uh, out of the 343, what's the breakdown between well, we IT added, well, the wiring. and wiring? Yeah. We did not ask for that, so we don't know that. But you have an idea because you know what it was going to be. Do you have any idea what the wiring's worth? Well, it was 160, 200 for the IT and 160 for the wiring was where I was getting my estimates from. So, so I'm just a doing some math here, but since um, the change orders to date, and then the um, and then this basically addition is so up to about four hundred and forty-five thousand. The additional cost so far. Correct. <coughs> yeah. I know the two buckets that we had that you could point to. So we had 200 for IT. And we had 300 for site work. So in essence, we're pretty much through those two numbers. Because the 300 for site work has a lot to do with the change orders. Yep. <coughs> so you're pretty much through those two, two columns. 300 and the 200. Right. And we don't have anywhere near the site work completed that we need. Yeah. I know Matt's been working with Todd, our finance director, on trying to get a picture of where we are financially. I think at our next meeting we'd like to, you know, share that with you guys before the next meeting, but we'd like to try and get a good feel for where where we are and, and how much you know, what are we gonna do to recover. Yeah, I think that's helpful because uh, we're waiting to set off on a fire department project that 
I think we need to understand what the number is. Yeah, and I think yeah. Matt and I, and, and, you know, we've talked about that internally a little bit. I think we, you know, we'd assume hold off on, you know, you know, not, not, we're not ringing the disaster bell, but we want to just make sure we don't spend any money until we get a good feel for where we are monetarily. Yeah, makes sense. <coughs> Except for the blasting. Yeah, the blasting's going to be done no matter what. So. Oh, yeah, we have a, uh, we're working on an itemized budget report on everything, so. Good. I think if the town elects to, to <coughs> go with signal electr electronics, that it's not a subcontractor to BC Construction. This would be a separate contract with the town. If this was done as a subcontractor to BC, they would just add 5% to this. And I, I don't see any reason to do that. You can hire your own contractors, have them work in concert with the subs that are on the job. They'd still have prevailing wage rate to pay, the prevailing wage rates within their estimate. So they're not out there competing with Griffin Electric on that regard as far as prevailing wage. They have to pay the same prevailing wage. Well, we bid this as working for us direct. Yeah. But we don't, we're not going to. You have, but you, you bid it as though they work for the town of Norfolk direct. You right. could elect to assign this to BC Construction. I'm, I'm not recommending you do that. But you have, you could do that. So does that cause that? No, I don't think we, we need we, to do no. that. What's that? No, I'm not saying we do it either. I'm just, mm -hmm. some contractors, I'm sure that's probably fine. And some contractors, that's. Uh, it's just a markup you don't exactly need to. Exactly right. It's the markup. Yeah. You don't need to pay it. Exactly. I don't see any advantage of doing that. Okay. And I assume this won't be for a while, even. I mean, I think get walls. They would need walls, but we would want them under contract, so they need to provide any specialty back boxes to the electrical contractor. They need to coordinate with Griffin, and they need to specify equipment and then give us a submittal and then make orders and get equipment. So I don't think you should be waiting on this. I would recommend that you take action on it. Enough to bid. I mean, they were the lowest responsible bidder for what we're looking for. That's what we did. Yeah, I mean, yeah, the motion to award well. it to go with it. Yeah. Award to Signet Electronic, the amount of three hundred forty-three thousand seven fifty. Second. Second it. Okay. Oh, I got a question. No, I just <laughs> we don't want to step on toes. Jack, can you just spell the name of that company? S I G N E T. Electronic <coughs> system. Okay, we have a motion to second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Signet owns the wire that goes down the conduit and the termination into the faceplate. Cal and fives and all that stuff. <coughs> yeah. But so there's no other wiring that's going to come back to. The only other wiring that you may anticipate is audio visual. We haven't done any AV. If you want. That wasn't included in this. Uh, this. Not. Problem? Not the equipment or any. We have wireless access points wired, but we don't have any equipment to plug into that wireless access point. So we don't have the cameras or any of that? Oh, yeah. Well, which cameras are you talking about? Well, cameras and security. Like security cr cameras around the building. That's it. The yeah. foyer, you know. Um, so which which audio vision? So, so I'm, when I think of audio vision, I'm thinking <coughs> of the security cameras. Which, which audio video are you thinking of? Just like a, like a TV? Projector, uh, smart board. Uh, if you have any audiovisual needs, like this, like yeah. this. So if it's you need to wire part. something for this training room, that we're talking about. 
Are you talking oh. about in the training room or in well, the mech conference room? If it's a conference room, patrol room, training room. The <coughs> interview rooms are part of this. Oh, okay. All the hard drive is part of this. We might might spec it out so that was all included, but the, the peripheral stuff like that's not. Nor the telephones. But the telephones are gonna be pre wired. I mean, so we're just gonna they'll be small enough that we just do short tell because we have the whole town on short tell, so we'll just keep the same system. But I mean, except for the peripheral stuff like this, we have all the boxes in the wall ready to rock and roll. It was in the hard drives and the switches behind it. I guess in this, in summary, what's included in Signet's cost is the wiring and equipment for closed circuit TV security, audio, <coughs> uh, access control. So all of the access control cards, readers, and and software, interview room recording systems, uh, any intercoms are included. Cell checks for your for your uh, cell check devices is included. And then telephone and data cabling throughout the entire building. Now it includes head end equipment too. So you have the equipment and software and servers, not only to just watch the video, Switches but to and all store that. the video. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We inspect it all out. Okay. Okay. Um, so smart boards, projector in like the training room, that's not included at all. If it's an audio visual piece of equipment, it's not included. And not even the wiring for it. Wiring is. Oh, the wiring is. Yeah, we have we have data wiring going. It's not those. the equipment. Yeah. But there is a line for computer equipment in there, but I don't know if that's completely exacerbated because of this. But there is a seventy-five thousand dollar line for computer equipment and stuff like that, which seventy-five thousand dollar which doesn't sound like that much, but computers really aren't that much, so um, hopefully we'll have something. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'll agree. <laughs> <laughs> but having it all done with this company is we actually, <coughs> we were looking at trying to keep some of it in-house yeah. and try to build it ourselves, but the, being critical ops and if you don't, have 100%, you know, if anything goes wrong, there's a warranty on it now. It's all put in from a company that they have the warranty stand behind it, figure it out, they have to deal with the headaches, yeah. make sure it's a good product. Yeah. Instead of piecemealing and hoping, you yeah. know. The reason that I didn't want to give this to the electrical contractor is I've always stated these systems need integration. They need to talk to each other. And Signet is the largest integrator in New England. This is what they do. So their systems talk to each other. <coughs> So if you get to a card reader system and you want the camera to, to know that you swiped a card, they talk to each other. These are these are systems that through the software they can communicate with each other. If you push an intercom button, the camera will know that. And the camera will go to that door. So that's the integration I was always looking for. And that's what you'll get through this company. Okay. Make a motion. Did, did you vote? Yeah, yeah we did. did. Awesome. Done. <laughs> <coughs> so I can draft a contract, Jack. If you want to do a, that'd be great. I'll draft a contract. Uh, another bid just came in yesterday was rock excavation, and again, thanks to Matt, we coordinated uh, this set of drawings and specs. Discrepancy. Talk about discrepancy in a bid. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're talking over 50 percent here. Yeah. Same drawing, same specifications. The low bidder at base state blasting. If you look across the sheet, this is what the report that I get from Project Dog is where the bids were electronically submitted. And over on the right hand side, it says action, and it says approve, reject. I have administrative rights to go in here to review their paperwork and to find out that they have submitted everything they needed to submit and then I either approve or reject their bid this is not approving or rejecting their contract it's just saying that you they satisfy the bid requirements so I have to go in there and, and 
complete this as far as approve or reject. <coughs> All I know at this point is Bay State Blasting has provided the required bid bond that was requested. We had originally requested DCAM certification and update statements. That was uh, withdrawn through an addendum that the contractor does not have to be DCAM certified. So the paperwork is in order. Uh, I have not contacted the company as of yet, but I know they have a reputation. Uh, they've been in business for, for quite a while. They did acknowledge the addendums. There were two addendums that were issued. And they did acknowledge addendum one and addendum two. And I had had some email conversations with questions that they had, and they seemed comfortable with the scope. So that's good news. Uh, $74,000 was the bid price. The owner's estimated value was 80000 I just took that off of Matt's uh, email estimate. We had it in the central register at 60000 estimated value. Uh, we kind of split the difference at 74000 The the rock blasting and rock excavation here is going to be done in concert with work that's going to be done to assist the blaster from the town. The town has committed to provide an operator and an excavator to remove material uh, and assist the blaster. So all this is this 74,000 from Bay State blasting is the controlled blasting, it's the pre-blast surveys, it's the post-blast surveys, and it's the getting the rock down to an elevation that's indicated on the drawings. It's an elevation that accommodates the fire addition, but there's additional blasting that, that continues toward the church and, and takes out a, a good portion of that rock that's toward the church also. So there's a large quantity of rock that's, that's being uh, addressed here. But the blaster is not responsible for moving this material, getting it off off site. This is another. Uh, so, a couple of things are going to happen here. We're going to use our town employee, mm -hmm. at least a machine. I'm anticipating between his salary and the machine rentals, probably about 25, because we have to rent a large machine to move mm -hmm. mats. We're going to be doing all that to save costs. <coughs> when that's concluded, we have an agreement. We did an um, agreement with G Lopes. He's, we reached out to some other vendors to see if there's any value to the rock, um, which nobody felt it was worth trucking it. G Lopes is willing to take it for free, load it into their trucks for free, and remove it on their dime, follow all rules, hold the town harmless. Um, their stipulation is that the rock has to be blasted to 24 inch or minus, and it can have a 20% overage, which we put provisions in the language of the contract bid that they had to deal with it if they didn't, you know, manage it. But we did a lot of work to try to save as much money and work out as great as possible. So everybody's on board. We have uh, a letter of agreement that the attorneys looked at and signed, and Lopes is on board. We have the employee already reached out about um, large machinery. So they'll do any of the site work for the blaster. And when they're all done, Lopes comes in. And we'll have to coordinate their trucks because there'll be a lot of them. <coughs> but that'll be a minor detail for the money we're saving. Well, if we start in the in the middle in the out by the street, we create our own room to actually work off of. So, you know, so hopefully, it'll work out pretty well. So the blasting is actually closer to a hundred thousand to accomplish that part of the project. Is that what you're saying? Probably. Probably. Mm -hmm. Twenty-five. You right. just mentioned yeah. about within the right. seventy-four. All right. Yeah, probably. We have a site work line over that project as well, or an anticipated, which. I, I'm looking at the 168,000 bid, and I'm assuming they missed the whole fact that the donor was taking the rock away. I, I, I don't know why he was at 168, but it's probably more of a value if they were responsible for loading it and removing it. How about main drilling and blasting? Did they miss it too? Because they're 93, they're closer to what the actual cost is going to be. I know you said you could see what they. Yeah. But they, I don't know if you looked at it that No, they, they submitted with one number. There's no breakdowns other than that one bid amount. Just for blasting? Yeah. Huh. Brian from Maine was aware of the scope of the work. Okay. Yeah. Based on, based on all the rock that we have there, 
to get it all done for a hundred grand. Yeah, it's a pretty good deal. <coughs> We're not taking any action on this. Do you review it? Correct. Uh, you. I would write a similar letter once I'm done reviewing it. Yep. Um, I know that bids are good for thirty days. So I think you could take action on it. Okay, well then Pending yeah, his pending his approval. Approval. <coughs> All right. Want to make a motion, Bob? Um, I make a motion that we um, go into a contract with Bay State Blasting for seventy-four thousand dollars to do all the blasting at the uh, one seventeen Main Street. Second. That's uh, pending. 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 His review. Architectural yeah. approval. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Unanimous. I'll, get, no, I'll do my review and then provide another letter and a contract. How soon could you get that done? Because I just know that, you know, we're in winter conditions and it's actually pretty easy for them to, you know, work through these conditions. Yeah, they'll probably want to get out there as soon as possible. The weather doesn't affect them. Right. That's what time I could with my employee because that way it doesn't affect 14 Sharon because we're not trying to compete right. projects. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we put a 90 days <coughs> to award it. That would be complete by. Yeah. Good. Uh, windows are closed and people won't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> That's true though. That's yeah. true. That's true. Uh -huh. well, I should be able to do that this week. I do want to reach out to Bay State and talk to them about schedule and if they're comfortable with the number. That's something I, I always do as a courtesy. Did they miss anything? Are they comfortable? Give them an opportunity to tell us you know, that there is a problem or not. Ask them if they've actually seen it. Right. I mean, it's all stripped back. Pretty easy to see it all exactly what they're going to do. So, hey, I've got several phone calls from him. He's uh, anxious. Very anxious to see it and, and look at it. He was very he had a lot of questions. So. Good. Uh, application number seven for BC construction <coughs> has been submitted uh, through 1 8 2018 in the amount of 322,806.67. This isn't a number that I'm bringing for approval, but it is probably an, not to exceed. I don't know, Jack, they don't have to vote on these numbers? Or? No, I, they do have to vote. Okay. I can. I'd rather have them vote. Well, it would be a not to exceed $322,806.67. The reason I say not to exceed is um, both working with Al and myself, we have some numbers that we're going to dispute on this. And so the number would be going down, not up. It sounded like Mike had already. Yes, it did. Any significant out of curiosity? Yeah, we don't have it. Not a hundred thousand. Oh no, no. I moved to approve BC's requisition not to exceed three hundred twenty-two thousand eight hundred six point six seven. I haven't seen it. This represents twenty. Submitted it yet? They're going to resign yourself, but you think it's not going to go past that amount? <laughs> they're going to bring it down. There's a couple over. Uh, this represents 26% of the contract value. <laughs> and again, application number <coughs> seven. We're seven months into this, and we're at 26%. That's, That's scary. Out of a 12 month contract. That's uh, pretty anemic. Uh -huh. A motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Now, for the discussion. No. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. It's unanimous. One item that's hanging over our head is the roofing panels. I don't know if there's any update. I know. Uh, just learned today that uh, town council sent me a letter uh, talking about trying to mediate that. Uh, I haven't seen the letter yet, so we'll probably will see it tomorrow. Okay. I, I'm just initially concerned with mediation. Because that what, what that typically means is, is 
split, split them up them in half. Them. Yeah. And I was hoping that it, it wouldn't get to mediation and just say, say okay, only. So it's immediate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can talk. I'm sure we can have a conversation once you get the letter, and then we can have a conversation about it. Yeah, mediation might be an easy answer, but it, it's typically 50 50 when you come out of those situations. And I, I think that that would be a, what they're probably hoping for. Yeah. Anyway, I'll look at the letter. Yeah. We've got to get that behind us because there's a dollar attached to that that oh, yeah. would also impact the project. Yeah. Anything else? That's my update. <coughs> Anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I have one. Brian, I, I read these things come from uh, BC Micro. So uh, is this something about some beam that's I'm not so level again, and needs support? Yeah. Can you explain that? I took pictures of them today. They're not the angles that I thought he was talking about initially. We have frames that are installed to, to uh, provide window frame openings for windows on the upper floor. And most of the windows on the upper floor have, are in the back of the building. We only have limited windows in, on the upper floor in the parking lot side of the building. But we've installed steel to create window frames. So the windows could be set in. Because of the span of the steel, there's a sag in those window frames. And our initial response was the light gauge framing that's going to go in and frame that wall will stiffen up those to keep them straight. And Mike's concerned that that's not going to be the case, that the stress on the, the angles is going to be too great for the light gauge framing. So he wants to our structural engineer to take a look at it and see if we can stiffen those frames before the metal studs get installed and get them back to a, a horizontal plane. With a threaded rod? <coughs> There's nothing really to hang them from, Bob. If you're looking at what the fascia is above, the fascia above is just light gauge. And there's no structural so steel up at the, at the top of the roof. So one thought I had is there's, we could weld another angle to the to what's there and stiffen it to that, but there's nothing to hang it from, and there's nothing to brace from below because it's just a light gauge girt that's below it. So we've got to do something within the frame that's going to provide a stiffener and get it back to to level. I didn't look at it when I was out there. I didn't know what he was talking about. Yeah, I took some pictures. I initially thought it was the angle, which is on the lower level. We have another angle, which is at the top of masonry. And he agrees, we agree, that that, <coughs> that angle, while it has a sag in it on the lower level, once the masonry comes up, the masonry will be supporting that, and, and the masonry will keep it horizontal, and then we can put light gauge on it. When so that was the one that we initially had considered the one with the sag, but it, it it's now the upper frames. When your structural engineer was on site the last time, he took a look at it. So he took some information about it so you could talk to him and combine your observation today and his observation. You could probably come up with a solution to that. When was he out there? He was at like about two or three, two, two, or three weeks ago. So like three, three plus weeks out. Yeah. So so did he start looking at the welding connections and all that? No. I don't think they were welded at that point. No, no, they were not. You'd be able to send those pictures to Bob. I could. I was going to ask Al if you guys send me those pictures on the um, uh, the insulation. Okay. That goes all the way down to the footing. I'll dig them up. Yeah. In, do you have daily logs going? Pardon? Do you have daily logs? Yes, we do. Um, can you send those uh, along too? Okay. Like many. Okay. You want to uh, bi monthly or weekly? We have a lot of daily logs. Um, 
What, what do you have? Just send it electronically. Well, your contract okay, updates monthly updates. And Brian's is weekly updates. Okay. And I know that there was an email that Matt was might be referring to that he's requested us to be out here weekly. We can't support the project being out here weekly. Uh, we've, we've been supporting the project in a lot of different ways, but weekly visits is not going to be part of the scope. It's in the contract. I understand it's in the contract. And we have sagging steel for three weeks that we thought of something else, but you don't come out, so how are you going to know? I mean, this is. I don't think that's fair. And no, it is fair. It's a written contract that you signed stating that you'd be out here. There's a lot of things that aren't happening, and that is fair that people are looking for direction and we don't have direction. And you're assuming it's something else. But if you came out here and had a weekly vi visit, which is part of your contract, we wouldn't be having all these delays that you blame on everything else, but a lot of it is your issue. I'm sorry you feel that way. It's not feeling. It's documented. It's I understand what the contract says, but I also understand that we've been giving this project a lot of standard of care that's way beyond our contract scope, way beyond our contract scope. And I don't want to get into it. If you want to talk about it, we can talk about it. But we will another time. Anybody else? You guys going to the MEC meeting tomorrow? Or is that, I yes, know I am. No. Nobody else has any questions. Well, the only other issue I, we've we got to resolve. CDR has presented us with a extension, and uh, uh, I just need to talk to you and Mr. Leanne. Probably Jim was working on that with me. So okay, we can work on that. And get back to Al. Okay. Thank you, Brian. Go back to our earlier question. I was going to ask was. <coughs> you said that uh, BC came in under what you estimated, if I heard you right. And with the change orders that we've had, where are we now? <coughs> Total part, is that part of this sheet here? That's where we are as far as dollars amount now. When I said that BC came in under our original estimate I was going off of the last professional cost estimate that was prepared prior to bidding mm -hmm. which indicated at that time we were a million dollars over the budget and we were trying to come up with how we're going to solve this problem um, when the bids came in it came in a million dollars under the estimate and we thought that we just solved the problem but we're finding that BC now has not included this and not included that and Griffin didn't include this and these all things that we thought were taken care of are not taken care of like the roofing panels for, for one then so while the, the bid was favorable at BC's at time of beat at time of bid it, it's looking like the project is getting back to where that professional cost estimate was anticipating it to be before we bid creating the hardship on the budget again. Which is the basis for my question is at the end of the day, where are we going to be? Because I, mean, I know I'm hearing from the red team. So, and you know the red team's going to want a building. So how much money are we going to have left for the red team's building? I think the last major component that we need to resolve is the roofing panels. So the change orders hopefully are going to diminish or end? Well, you look at the change orders, Chief, and if you separate out what change orders are site work related and which are drawings and, and yep. related to the contract documents, there's a huge discrepancy there. So, yeah, the change order activity has all primarily been a site. the site, site work. Yeah, sure. no, and I got that. I think it's $140,000 of site work in the change orders. So that should go away because the site work is now being turned back to the owner instead of BC construction the more you have BC construction take over your site work issues then I can't tell you when the end is going to be right it's it's going to be hard to determine that 
Are these some of these steel issues or any of those you think are going to end up in change orders or potentially, but I don't see those to be large numbers. Well, the roofing panels is going to be something. The roofing right. panels. Well, the roofing panels is a significant. So right away between that and if whether this sag issue is an issue or any other. Yeah. You know, any, I don't know what those numbers are going to be, but. I don't think I've seen them. If I have, I. Well, I don't anticipate any large number because of what we're talking about for these th this window frames. Right, but the roofing issue. Is the gonna the roofing nice. panels is is a hurdle we need to get resolved, and until we 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 understand the, the position that the attorney's looking to go. I mean, it's still a potential liability on the town side. I can only state my my position but I'm not an attorney they said I I, I think you should tell them to go pound sand but I'm not an attorney but then we have a delay and that's you know another issue so just telling him to go out and get the roofing panels probably would not motivate him enough to go out and do that so we'll put them up you need you need them same with the siding. We're not. We're, we're getting nowhere in the last month. I thought I, we'd be sided. I think this, in my opinion, this roofing panels is fabricated. So, yeah, how much have we spent on on the town side on excavation? Um, about twelve in labor. About 25 machine. <coughs> and, um, material. Material. I'd say we're probably at another 20. I think we're at 60 for what we've done so far. We also have a septic tank or a, a tractor pit. So right now, that's not installed. I just had that ordered in. Um, we're about 75 for what we've been dealing with. That out of the 300 or outside of the 300? That's within the 300. Within the 300. But, but we've already used 150 of the 300 towards change orders. Yeah. I think it's around 150. Don't hold me to that, but somewhere right yeah. in Well, if you take the 445 plus the 60, <coughs> you know, we're pretty much at yeah, 500. So right now. Pretty gone through our contingency already. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Cole wasn't going to be here, and, he, and I, you know, they're responsible to at least right. stick up for his side of the project. You know, the, yeah. I mean, we, we can't even can't even address architects' uh, activity on his project until we finish figure out exactly, like within ninety percent completion. We might be held off that long to find out if we're going to be uh, on what that number is going to be. You know, your liabilities do decrease. I, I you know I think Matt's got a handle on the site work. I think so too. From here forward, but. All of that is still going to mean money to complete. Yeah. That all is going to take an the best day. We still have several hundred thousand dollars worth of work to do. There's no getting around. Oh, it. easily. Yeah. Uh, I think the 300 would have been too close before having change orders. I mean, even to date, I don't think 300 is realistic after you know seeing what things cost and. I think that the last budget when we when we <coughs> knew what the bid was from BC construction we had seven hundred thousand in contingency over and above the three hundred thousand that we had for the site work costs but that seven hundred thousand was for both projects it's not that the police department gets all seven hundred and then the then the fire department gets zero but it's going to end up that way it, it might tend to go that way though mm. and what, the number you just said five hundred plus another Two or three hundred, we're going to be at seven, seven or eight. Yeah. So, and that's that. If you add those two numbers, that's going to be both fire. Well, going into a fire department project with zero contingency, right. it's not healthy. No, it's, no, it's mm -hmm. no. Not an old building like that. So we were right. we were initially going into the police department project thinking we were a million dollars over. We might end up being close to that. I think we. We must have a good control of what the exposure is, you know, because, like you said, you need to know, you know, wh what is it, you know, how much money it, 
are we going to spend? So we need to have a good control of what of the unforeseen <coughs> things. Have you been working on any of that? It's under your purview, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Mike and I were working on it. Okay. Uh, uh, can I ask one more one? question? Sure. Yeah. Brian, um, <coughs> I know t in talking to Mike out there, he'd like to see um, Andrew Whitehouse go out there and just look at the project, just to see some of the, the not being out there ever. He doesn't know exactly what he's looking at based on conversations all the time. Not a whole lot to see when you go out there. I think it would help just so that. Is. Um, is Andrew an architect, by the way? No, he's not licensed. So is he m making licensed calls, though? Is he allowed to be doing some of the? Because I know he does all the RFIs. No, that's acceptable. He's under my supervision. supervision. No, he's very knowledgeable. He's very, very talented. I, I just one of the complaints with Mike is that. He's answering a lot of these RFIs, but he's he's not aware of it, what the site even looks like. Sometimes it is helpful just to see the conditions <coughs> right there. It changes the scope of what you thought the work was today by seeing it. It, it, it does matter. We can address these issues. I, I, we've the RFIs on this project are are, are high. There's been a lot of questions. Not, we've addressed them. Uh, I, I think you have on a lot of them as well, but I, I think the stairway issue has been the, has been the biggest holdup and way too long to review, in my opinion. Uh, even when he got back to you with the uh, slab of being two foot thick to handle <coughs> all the different postings, you know, it still took a while for you to get back to him with the, okay, go ahead. Um, you, reali you realize we had to review that five times. No, I'm talking about once that final review is done and he had, I forget how many columns are coming down in that for that stairwell, he, he said, how about if I do a two-foot thick slab, you know, to right. hold up all these postings? And, and it still took another, I think it was like three weeks to get back to him about it. In weather conditions that are coming upon us, Three weeks makes a huge difference. So, uh, if I, I can review that, I, I know that the RFI log that he hands out has the date that it's submitted and the date that it's responded to. So that information is available to see what is that. Is it on this RFI? Is this not, yeah. yeah. Is. Do you know what number it is? <laughs> it's the one with five responses right there. So the fifth submission was 11 2 to 11 14, 10 13, 10 27, 9 18, 9 20. That was a quick one. So that tracks our performance on. So two weeks on the last submission, which I'm assuming the last submission was the um, uh, the fittings, but it's not it's not clear. I don't know if any of them on there, Bob. You could find a three week duration on any of those. Because um, eleven fourteen, that was. But you elected to have the con steel contractor design the stairs. You could have designed them. No, this is it's just. It's when I've talked to other architectural firms, you elected to let them do this. Which, if you had designed them yourself, this wouldn't have been a problem. If I did a lot of the things myself, there'd be less of a problem. Mm -hmm. But I'm not here to build the building, and I'm not here to design it to, though. To take care of his design responsibility, which he has when he bid the project. If I do a lot of the work for Mike, then yeah, it's the same as if, if Al went out there and did more work outside of his scope. 
but designing of the staircase dimensions the are not part of your scope of work. We, give, we gave the information. It's like the sprinklers, and it's like, like lightning protection. Sprinklers, we don't design every layout, every head. It's a performance spec, and they have to come out and the subcontractors responsible for engineering that system, providing final calculations, and submitting that with an engineer's seal. Exterior metal studs. We're due an engineer's seal for the design of the exterior metal studs. And for <coughs> lightning protection, it's a performance spec. They're responsible to go out and get an engineer and give us something that's designed to stamped and certified. This is not uncommon in our profession. So this is the way we've handled every project. And I'll tell you, with every project, it's not a problem. <laughs> they have a subcontractor here that's not fully versed in what they're supposed to be doing. We've taken on the responsibility because we've had to review it five times. And it says in our contract with BC Construction, we're only having to review things twice. We did that five times. Every time we gave them information to try to assist them on what they're look what they should be giving us. Yes, if if I did it all myself, but that's not the responsibility that we have. Their subcontractor had a responsibility, and their subcontractor should have been experienced enough to take on that responsibility. Obviously, they weren't. That's a structural issue, no? <coughs> they, they. I think we got. They yeah. did the engineering. We submitted the en they submitted the engineering, and they were submitting drawings that were not code compliant for a stair. So obviously, we did our due diligence, and we had to reject it because it didn't meet code. I. It would be great if we just said approved. We couldn't, and it took us five times to get a drawing that met code. Every time we gave them a submission back, we told them what we've been looking for. And in the end, they gave us something that now resembles what's on our drawings. Okay. Could, can you just look into that footing? Because I don't, I don't think that's really listed here based on what I'm looking at. If it is, you know, my apologies. I just well, any RFI that's been submitted is on that list. Okay. So if it was an RFI that's It's been just submitted. saying Larkin. But I wouldn't think the Larkin would be the one that would have been doing the footing, you know, extending the slab thickness. Well, they were delayed in getting us the design on that stair. So what Mike says is he's needing to provide a two-foot footing somewhere for a column. Why doesn't he just pour the whole thing as two feet? <coughs> and then the issue goes away. And we said, that's acceptable. That can keep you moving and, and keep you going forward. He said, I'll take the cost of the concrete because I haven't given you the answer yet from Larkin on where the columns are going to fall. So the whole stair in that area has a two-foot concrete slab underneath it. No, I know it. And now he can place posts wherever he wants. Right. Now he well, I understand it. all that. I just didn't understand. It was my understanding that he had submitted it and it was a good three or four weeks before he got back an answer to say go ahead and that's why we were into the cold weather before it got poured. Uh, just saying what I heard. So. I know. There's a lot of stories. Yeah. But uh, that's every <coughs> RFI that's been submitted and every one that's been responded to. All right. Next meeting. Do we, do we need to meet in two weeks? I will be out here for a job meeting. I don't see anything that you need to do as a building committee. So, when, when you Four weeks. Four weeks? All right. So what does that What's bring this up to? Is it the second Tuesday of every month or the first Tuesday? I think it's the second. Second. Okay. Is the uh, the thirteenth? February thirteenth. Okay. That'll be our next meeting then, February thirteenth. Yes, this committee. Four o'clock. Four o'clock. Correct. Hopefully, it'll be all closed in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Hopefully, it'll be all closed in. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. yeah. All right, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Good job, Jack. Well.